could have taken him. Let's move. Bail, keep an ear on comms. Affirmative. Buck, Tanaka, full security. On it. All right. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the first in our new series of Let's Play videos. This one will be following us through the brand new Halo 5 Guardian series, which looking at just at this opening screen, I think we'll all agree is a, a visually stunning game. It's my uh it's the first game we've obviously got on our new Xbox One and I have to say what a what a an eye opener for how graphics have just moved along really. Obviously this is the uh, the first mission in the series, introducing us to Fireteam Osiris and in particular Agent Locke. Just moving out now to have a bit of a look at this battle scene out here. Halsey and Imdama are holed up inside a forerunner structure ahead. That's our target. So Halsey called us? She said there was something big happening and gave Captain Lasky coordinates to find her. There must be something big. Look at that. That's pretty damn impressive. That is awesome. Really gives a scale to, to how big this thing is. Or, yeah, at least gives you a sense of something more outside of this corridor that we're obviously allowed to walk down. Some wreckage. Some Promethean cannons. All the landscape is just beautifully crafted, just really, really well thought out. Contact. And here we go into our first piece of combat. On my mark. Got it. As you can see there, I've, I've placed a marker down for the rest of my fire team to move to. It's quite a nice feature of, of being able to send them in ahead of you. Obviously you can use them as, as a complete distraction for the enemy to target or, or give them a, a, a purpose of taking a specific area. Another new function is to target individual enemies, forcing your fire team to, to focus its fire and engage the hostile for you. Obviously the pistol is still immense. Yep. Bit of a misuse of the booster there. It's going to take a little while getting used to or, ju or judging the distances that the boost is capable of propelling you and just how far you sort of have to engage a jump prior to boosting or See if we can climb this. There we go. The new ascent. Obviously, that's the, another one of the new Spartan abilities: the ability to clamber up on on a ledge previously too high for you to jump. I understand there is an ability in the in the menus to toggle whether the clamber mode is actually uh, automatic or something that you you have to. Uh, repress the A button for, or even hold the A button down for. But uh, to be honest, I'm quite happy just double tapping the A to 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 make it initiate the the climb. I'm sure there'll be some pro gamers out there who'll have their own stance on how these things should and could work, the bumper jumpers and and all that. 
Let's try and flank each side of the doorway. Uh, Spartan charge. Yeah, another one of the new abilities. Something I'm sure will come in handy in the multiplayer and very satisfying as well. And again, I, I, I can't state it enough, I am super impressed with the visuals of this game and the sound and uh, the sound quality and everything. It is just, for me, really immersive. Prometheus, all sides. We could push right up the middle. That would be rough. Might want to consider flanking them. Move smart. Fire with a purpose. I don't know if that was built in purely as part of the, the sort of training aspect of this first mission, but Buck giving you suggestions about how to flank enemies and stuff like that, that's pretty cool. And this is all that was obviously briefly the smart link. There it is again. Uh, the ability now for your uh, supposedly heads up display within your 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 visor to display virtual targeting sites which obviously are indicative uh, to each weapon yeah I got a bit that's fairly satisfying as well that was obviously the ground pound uh, another one of the new Spartan abilities to hover briefly above the enemy giving you time to, to target them and then using the suit's boosters to slam you down on top of them. Again, something I'm sure will be become heinously annoying in multiplayer but also heinously satisfying for the actual person doing it. Taking a bit of a shot to the shields there. And another thing to obviously remember in, in from an aspect of the multiplayer is now that your your shields will not recharge while you're in a sprint. Oh, I balled that one up. That would have been pretty satisfying. Uh, coming off worse here. Ah. Uh, so now we've got a chance to see the team revive me, which is, is obviously something they can only do if they're in close proximity to, them, to you, so you don't particularly want your team too far or too far, uh, too far ahead or too far behind. And likewise, obviously, this works in reverse as well. Should your your teammate get downed, you have the ability Take to revive them. Failing that, if you don't, and obviously none of the other squad members revive them as well, uh, they actually remain out of um, combat for a period of time. I'm not entirely sure whether it's to sort of checkpoints or, or save points, or whether it's to the entirety of the mission. But somewhat like Kenny from South Park, they always seem to come back. Target 
target a soldier. Tangling with a soldier right now. Copy that, Mom. I'm on it. Let's see if we can use the boost. Oh, if only I could, if only I could have timed that elbow better. I knew what I wanted. Just couldn't get to the buttons quick enough. On my mark. Right Bring the team up with us again. Sealed tight. Forerunner security station must be in lockdown. Any way to lift it? The Artemis can analyze Forerunner systems. There might be a way to override. Yeah, that was the wrong choice. Should have just Artemis gone for the clamber. Similar. I convinced Commander Palmer to outfit us with prototypes. There you go. Let's see. This should do it. I think you have to give the guys at 343 some real kudos points. They've um, they've really outdone themselves. Let's be honest. From every little detail on all of this landscaping, the rock formations, cliff edges, yeah, the, the sort of hanging ice. Position. All the way back to that previous room we were just in, with just the architecture, just the, the way the room was laid out, I, I don't think I'd have the imagination to pull off half of this. Every little last detail is just really, really well thought out. And I mean, to be honest, that goes for a lot of games these days, a lot of AAA titles. You only have to look at the, the level of detail in uh, the new Assassin's Creed Syndicate just to appreciate how much work's gone into remaking London. And I think, you know, some some of these level designers these days and, and designers of weaponry and, and in general the whole team behind all these games are just, you know, geniuses in some respect. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some real atrocious games the out there on the, the market as well. The the but games like this just fill me with awe. It's the only slight disadvantage with this new uh, smart link or scoping system of theirs is obviously you can be pushed out of it every time you, you take a hit which while it makes perfect sense doesn't make it any less annoying yeah, too, too far away to make this an effective choice of weapon I'm taking a lot of hits I need to Recharge the shield slightly, make sure Buck's behind me to revive me. Oh, it's still taking a lot of damage. Again, you only have to look skyward to see all the shots raining in overhead, coming from different gun turrets and, and gun emplacements and that, that. Uh, surface to air cannon there. Yeah, you 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 really do feel like you're immersed in something much bigger than than the small battle you're you're focusing on here, and it's something that that obviously with the power of consoles in the past and everything was never possible. You could never create these 
huge battlefields and landscapes. But now I think we're in a, a real golden age, really. Oh, I've taken some hits. Are the team going to make it to me in time? Obviously you can see the little green edged diamond there counting down how long they've got left to revive me. And should I get downed completely we, we only revert back to the, the former checkpoint so it's, it's not the end of the world. Although on certain skill levels I do believe there is uh, rewards for making it through levels uh, without needing to be revived or restarting. So that might be something to aim for for all you um, <laughs> gamers who are much better than me looking at that. Oh, I'm down. So you'll get to see how far we have to go back now. Which is bugger all really. It gives us a, a chance to rethink our tactics of how we move through the landscape at the very least. The massive Kraken moving overhead. Almost took that to the face. Take that position. Let's attempt to get a little bit higher up. There's a gun in placement there we need to get rid of. Just a little bit beyond our reach. Just be careful that it comes to the left as well. He's attempting to hit me and that is taking my shields down heavily. I could do with trying to get hold of Buck. Yeah, I am taking a pound in as well. Get rid of these guys. Good arm. No more grenades. Through that door. On it, Roger. Are they actually engaging him or are they just leaving me to do it? No, he's down. Area's clear. Halsey and Abdama are somewhere inside that structure. We do this right, we bring our target home and end the covenant in one move. Must have dealt a blow to Indama's authority when the Prometheans turned on him. Gained a lot of followers, styling himself as a forerunner prophet. Jewel and Dama is an It's almost like he's got a little bit of a skip going on. It was only a matter of time until his version of Bouncing around like this. With this heavy cannon in his hands. We're close to Halsey's position. We have to keep an eye out for these sort of data pads. Obviously something a bit more to collect. Oh! Oh, he's behind a door. Concentrate fire on the broken armor. It's 
nice little heads up display on the left hand side of the screen there that was informing us exactly how to take down these knights. He's dancing around, crabbing his way across the floor. myself away from him. And again. Keep up the pressure, Cyrus. Didn't have the effect I was hoping for. I messed it up that time and I'm down. I'm down. Need an assist. Enemies advancing. Knight's gonna jump you. No worries, Mark. I back. Come up. Thanks. Let's try again. That's a bit more like it. Alright. Danger is clear. We move on Halsey and Jewel. I love these cutscenes. Especially the ones where you know the Spartans are about to walk in and kick some ass. I remember particularly loving, I don't know if any of you ever played Halo Wars, some of the cutscenes in that involving the, the Spartans were, were awesome. She's a sassy one. Obviously the good doctor missing an arm now. I'm sure we'll see her with one of these uh, prosthetic arms. as we saw one of the Spartans use in the Halo Reach series as well. Whose name escapes me, I can't remember what she was called. It was the female Spartan of the team. That's pretty cool, going hand to hand. Or knife to hand. See, I'm not quite sure whether Locke's going to turn out to be a good guy, a bad guy, an anti-hero, or just an asshole. But, I like his armor. Okay guys, that's where we're going to end it for this episode. Obviously you can join me again next time as we take on uh, the second mission, which I believe is a blue team mission introducing uh, the Master Chief and the remaining members of Blue Team. 